These Baltimore Ravens, it's literally something new every single day. I got to say, I really appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all for keeping up with it. I appreciate y'all for keeping up with the videos. Cause I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot. Uh, but I appreciate y'all for being there every single step of the way. Um, and then it's a bonus because we, we've been hearing different stuff every single day this weekend. And now we even got a bonus playoff game. It, it, it we like almost doesn't even seem like the Ravens are in the play, but Ravens still got a playoff game. So, again, I said Ravens 21, Bengals 19. Don't forget. Uh, but anyway, this morning, um, exactly 15 minutes ago, because I'm recording this at 8.14 a.m., uh, Ian reported this at 7.59 a.m. So 15 minutes ago on a dot. Um, he said, despite the injury, the Ravens' stance on signing Q QB Lamar Jackson long-term hasn't changed. They plan to negotiate whenever the season ends. Um, and I thought that was interesting. But at the same time, while I, I – just because you negotiate with somebody doesn't mean a long-term deal is going to get done. Uh, I mean, see last year or, I mean, earlier this year, for example, with Lamar Jackson. But um, I, 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 I did think that it would actually be smart – of the Ravens to still make a try because um, the Ravens, they they have an advantage right now um, that they can try to use. Now, with Lamar, <laughs> if he's uh, if I actually if and when he sees that advantage, he can be like, uh, no, no, thanks. I don't want it. And what I mean, but what I say that is both this and last season, they going to use that like they're going to use that to their advantage as they should. It's business. It's business. They are a business, Lamar Jackson is a business, and these are two businesses that are, have been trying to come to an, an agreement, trying to find some middle ground, but will there be middle ground? We'll see. But the Ravens, they are going to use this season, hey, you missed the end of this season with injury. They're going to use last season, hey, you missed the last season with injury. And what they're going to do, so, hey, why should we give you all this, even if it's not a fully guaranteed deal, why should we give you this much guaranteed and this much and that much and that much? Why should we give you that if you missed all of this? Why? And then Lamar could be like, well, hey, you know what you are with me. You know what I do for you. And y'all the ones that you literally use me to do everything. I got to be the leading passer. I got to be the leading rusher. Come on now, and y'all don't give me not y'all don't give me much to work with. What's up with that? Like, so if you want me to keep on doing these things for you, show me the bread. So it's gonna be back and forth, and I mean that's what negotiations are about. Both sides trying to make their case as to why they should do something or why they should not do something. So that's what's gonna happen, and that's gonna continue to happen. But let's read the article. It says, and this is again from Ian. Rappaport. He said, for the second consecutive year, the Ravens faced the prospect of their electric quarterback watching their final game from the sidelines. Last year, it, and now hold up now, Ian. This ain't about to be that Ravens final game. So just in case, maybe if Lamar somehow, some way, next week he'll play. Oh, but wait till the end of this article for what Ian Rappaport said. But let's, let's, let's just keep going. Anyway, he said, for the second consecutive year, the Ravens faced the prospect of their electric quarterback watching their final game from the sidelines. Last year, it was a bone bruise to his ankle. This year, a PCL sprain. Yet, sources say the Ravens haven't changed their stance on whether Lamar Jackson is their future at quarterback. Whenever the season ends, Sunday against the Bengals or next week or at some point in the future, they plan to begin negotiating with Lamar Jackson with hopes of striking a long-term deal, sources say. They made inroads prior to the season but never reached the point of getting close to an agreement, as we all know because we, <laughs> we covered that extensively because, I mean, hey, that was a contract talk. And, and this, like, this is why I know my guy Josh Hoffman, he said it from jump, and I, I will never forget. That's why I always bring it up. He said this is this is part of the reason why he wanted the deal to get done so badly because every single situation, every single twist and turn, everything with anything that happened with Lamar Jackson this season, good or bad, the con with, so with the contract not being done, it was going to get brought up. It was going to be brought up. It was going to be thrown into anything. And now like he's injured. Oh, is he sitting out because he ain't got a contract? And then if he has a good game, hey, oh, see, well, Ravens, they, they better pay him. If he has a bad game, they'd be like, oh, no, this is why Ravens shouldn't pay him. And it, just every, everything. 
Since the contract is not done, the contract talk is going to get thrown into everything. But anyway, let's continue. It says, um, Jackson hopes for as much guaranteed money as possible, perhaps even a deal similar to that of Deshaun Watson. And that was one of the key holdups prior to the season. Jackson played on a 23 million fifth year option this past season after the Ravens good faith efforts did not end in a deal. Ooh, <laughs> I like how he slipped that in there, Ian. I know Ray Ravens, they cut him a check. Ian said, oh, yeah, come on, baby. Hey, here's my cash app. Throw it in there, man. And I mean, obviously, they cut Roquan a check, too. Y'all, y'all heard Roquan the other day. Y'all heard what he was saying. I said, all right, Roquan, I see you now. I see you. I, I know what you're doing. We know the game, baby. We know the game. Like I always say, I love the game, the actual game of football, watching the games and stuff. That's great. It's fun. It's amazing. But this game within the game is just as good to me. Just watching all this little stuff, watching for all these little hints and whatnot, these subliminals and whatnot. Because they, they ooh, the subliminals been going like crazy. They've been going like crazy. But anyway, Ian Rappaport said Ravens cut the check. I can't scream too loud because my family's still sleeping. Anyway, he said um, every expectation is that Baltimore will tag him for 2023 if they cannot work out a long-term extension, sources say. I mean, sources ain't even got to say that. Everybody been saying that. That's what it's looking like. I mean, that, that's what I think is going to go down for sure. I think it's going to be a tag, but then I don't think it's just going to be a tag. I think it's going to be a tag uh, and an unfortunate trade. Uh, but, hey, we'll see. We won't, uh, like we keep saying, we won't know till we know. We, uh, we could think one thing, and then it could be a whole different story, but we'll see when we see. Um, anyway, he said, though the, the particular tag is not yet known, most QBs receive the exclusive tag, which does not allow any other team to have a shot at the player, while other players receive the non-exclusive tag, meaning there is compensation in the form of two first-round picks if another team pries him away with a long-term deal. See that part right there. Um, I don't think Ravens would do that. With that, yeah, they would be able to get two first-round picks if Lamar signed with another team with that non-exclusive franchise tag. So that would guarantee them two, two first-round picks. And obviously, they would love that, two first-round picks. But if you put the exclusive franchise tag on them and still trade them, which you know, I expect to happen, um, then you could get more. The non-exclusive, yeah, let's another team negotiate with them. You guarantee them two first-round picks, but... The exclusive, you could get two first round picks and more. So I don't think it'll be a non exclusive tag for the Ravens because they're going to want them draft picks. What they do with them draft picks? Ooh, <laughs> but they're going to want them draft picks. So we'll see how it goes, man. Um, anyway. It said, uh, essentially, sources say, despite the disappointment with Jackson not being able to play in the first round of the playoffs, the Ravens are still all in. Ravens were never all in on Lamar Jackson. They showed that to you. They showed that to you. Ra Ravens were never all in on Lamar Jackson. Ever. They, they, they were never all in on him. Um, so many people feel like the Ravens, uh, this was a, a gamble. Lamar Jackson was just sort of a trial. The, he was a risk that the Ravens were like, all right, we'll, we'll see how it works out. If it does, it doesn't. If, if, I mean, if it does, it does. If it doesn't, okay, cool, whatever. So they took that risk on him, jumped back in the first round, 2018, after taking Hayden Hurst. That was their first first round pick. Cause like a lot of times we forget about that. A lot of times we don't even talk about that. Like, oh yeah, Lamar got drafted 32nd pick overall in the 2018 draft. But Hayden Hurst was way before that. But anyway, shout out to Hayden Hurst, by the way. Look at him with them Bengals. So yeah, we're gonna see Hayden Hurst in a couple of days. Well, in tomorrow. But anyway, um, with Lamar, it seemed like, yeah, it, it seemed like he was a project. It seemed like he was a project, because especially the way that they used him uh, in year one. Because remember, in year one, Joe Flacco was obviously still the starting quarterback. But they, would, and they really wanted to get Lamar Jackson on the field, as they showed. They really wanted to get him on the field. Um, but they just brought him in for the gimmicky stuff. Um, but then <laughs> when they went all in on him, they – brought him in for the gimmicky stuff and then they just expanded on all of that but they they did their thing 2019 it was a nice little surprise but after that that's when they really should have been all in they were never all in 
They they never put him in a position to grow to the max. Uh, they never brought in weapons to really just because again, if you have questions about him as a passer, answer the questions. Answer the questions. Why not bring in studs at the wide receiver position along to go to go with your young guys too? A nice compliment to both. Get the most out of him. Get the most out of them. And then set up an offense that'll do that too. They never did. Ever. Never did. So they were never all in on him. But I know Ian Rappaport, he's talking more so all in on them trying to sign him. But still, I just, that all in comment, that all in, I just, they, they were never all in on him. But anyway, continuing. Uh, to be sure, it has been a week for Jackson, who went public with details of his grade 2 PCL sprain and described his knee as swollen and unstable. All right, here we go. Now, this next part. I said, ooh, rap sheet, rap sheet, told them Ravens, cut the check. Ooh, I want to scream it so bad, but I can't because of my family sleeping. He said, cut the check to the Ravens. While swollen does seem to be accurate, especially after rehab workouts, unstable has not been a way it has been described previously. It does appear Jackson would be at minimal risk of re-injury if he played, ooh, this offseason is gonna be nasty. It's gonna be nasty. So Ian Rappaport let, letting it be known, like, hey, if Jackson played this week, if he played against the Bengals, it's the playoffs. Hello, baby. If Lamar Jackson played right now, he would be at minimal risk of re-injuring that PCL. So Ian Rappaport, like, hey, like he can play. He can play if he wants to. But it would, it would be minimal risk. He can play. And then he ended it off. But as he explained in his tweet, that's not the issue. The issue is he doesn't feel like he can be his 100% self if he plays. Thus, Jackson waits. And there is no guarantee next week changes anything. So thanks for putting that next week part in there. Because Ravens are getting to next week. At least. <laughs> anyway, so sh again, shout out to the, the score tomorrow. 21-19. That's what I'm saying, baby. Ravens 21-19. The upset of the week. And then next week, <laughs> we'll talk about that when we get there. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's that. So again, this um this is this is gonna be uh one of the biggest off seasons in Ravens history, man. Um and before it was an off season that there were question marks about Roquan Smith. I mean, we knew the Ravens were going to re-sign him. We knew that was getting done, like, for sure. Right? Uh, hello, he's a linebacker. Hello, he's a defensive player. Hello. Like, we knew he wasn't going anywhere. Like, even from jump. From jump. And then, like, just just watch stuff. I, I just, my thing, um, I just, I, I want y'all to watch stuff. Watch what gets put out there. Watch how the Ravens address certain players and don't address certain players watch how the media talks about certain players and stuff just watch the wording the phrases just watch it because I, I i want y'all because a lot, a lot of y'all do a lot of y'all see the stuff that's going on and a lot of y'all like what really just watch it like roquan smith oh he he gets re-signed to the team and stuff and they really been pushing roquan smith as the leader not necessarily the face of the franchise but almost um, he's he's the they called him the MVP of the team. I, I said, whoa, okay, okay, all right, now, yeah, well, okay. And not, and again, Roquan is great, great player, great player, made a nice impact on the team. Um, he got his hiccups here and there and stuff, but again, no player is perfect. Everybody got their hiccups, but Roquan has been really nice, really good player. But they've been talking about, hey, Roquan, he uh. He um he, he greets everybody he he learns everybody's name in the uh in the building and stuff like that and say like, hey that's great I remember when uh not in his contract year obviously but before they would say all that same stuff about Lamar too you don't hear that no more though they would always talk about how hey Lamar he's so respectful oh he he greets everybody with yes sir or, yes ma'am and stuff like that he, he's so nice to everybody and polite. You don't hear those stories anymore for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. But could just be coincidence. Hey, I, I don't know. But anyway, love y'all. Team, keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. Team, keep it clean. And we'll see how this negotiation goes whenever this negotiation takes place. 
uh, after this season. But Ravens season is not ending this week. We got at least one more week. Yeah, I've been saying it plenty of times because it's real. So like the Ravens won't be when it comes to being in the playoffs, still being in the playoffs after tomorrow night, we out.